Hi, in this video I'll be going in depth into configuring your pricing rules using our dashboard. I'll also point out a few things that might be useful for you when setting up pricing on your own store. Here under our basic pricing rules, we have some basic markups here uh, from wholesale costs. You can also do markdowns from MSRP. All you have to do is select the option that you want to try out. Uh, the most popular one we have is our tiered percentage markup on wholesale cost. And this is what I recommend a lot of folks use when setting up pricing on, on your store. The benefit in using this tiered percentage markup on wholesale is you're able to set different wholesale price tiers and create different markups for each tier and also the ability to add different dollar amounts for each of these tiers too. The fixed dollar addition is useful if you know you have additional cost either coming from your, your sales channel or platform or from your supplier. And it's an easy way to bake in those additional costs so that way there's no surprises at the end when you're finalizing the sale with your supplier. And to add a new price tier, all you have to do is click this Add Price Tier. And it's going to start the next tier based on where the, the, the end limit was set on your previous tier. So this next tier will start at 100, and let's say let's have it go to 250, and we want to do a 26% markup, and then let's add an $8 fixed dollar addition. And then all we would have to do is save these rules, and that's it. And anytime you want to add another tier, you can just click this Add Tier button, or when you're in here editing it, you can hit the minus sign here to remove one. Then anytime you update your rules, it's always a good idea just to save it. And then going more into our advanced pricing rules. A lot of these are very, very useful in just fine tuning and really getting all you can out of your margins. Uh, one of the options here is never let the product price exceed MSRP. This will limit your markups. Let's say based on your basic markup, uh, your listing price would be above MSRP. So instead of listing it above MSRP, if you turn this option on, it'll bring your listing price back down to MSRP so you're not um, selling above that. Now, map-based pricing. By default, our system will not let you violate map pricing provided to us by the supplier. Uh, what this option does, though, is it allows you to base your markup off of items that have a map price. So if you turn this on, you'll have the same markup rules here to do a flat dollar markup or percentage markup for map. And you can select the, the different options there and input your percentage. So let's say for any map based product that we have in our feed, it's going to disregard the basic markup and then just do a 20% markup from that map price. Now, uh, let's say you're now let's say you don't have this on, and your basic markup rules would put your sales cost below the map price of the product. By default, we won't let you violate map pricing. Um, so what would happen in that scenario is it would raise your listing costs to the map price, uh, so that way you're not in any violation and getting any notices from the brands or suppliers of those products. Another popular advanced pricing option we have is the enable landing cost. Uh, what this does is allow you to add in additional dollar amounts based on different weight tiers to help offset those, those higher shipping costs for heavier products. You can base this off of just the standard product weight, or we can do it off a of dimensional weight, which is calculated based off of the dimensions of the item and the weight of it. Uh, this is very useful for oddly shaped items like fishing rods or rakes or things like that, depending on which supplier you're using. Another option is the minimum product price. Any value you set in here uh, will be the base value of any item listed on your store. So let's say after all your markups are added in, the listing value of the product is going to be $12. If you input a minimum product price of let's say 20 here, that product price will be raised to 20. Uh, this just allows you to set, to set a minimum of, of your pricing on your store. The fixed dollar addition, this works in the same way as the fixed dollar addition on the tiered wholesale cost that I spoke about earlier, but it's just another way to add in additional costs uh, that are, you're either occurring from your supplier or your marketplace. And the price sense value feature is a way to just round off the sense value uh, for items on your store, you can input any value you'd hear that you'd like. Um, so a lot of folks just like it ending in 99 cents. 
include shipping cost and retail price. Uh, some suppliers provide a flat rate uh, shipping, just such as US Direct. And if you turn this on for the suppliers that support it, it will add in the shipping cost to the listing price of your item. Same with the dropship fee. If the supplier is providing a dropship fee uh, in the inventory feed to us, uh, typically this is based on a per order basis uh, whenever you send the order over to the supplier. But this is just a way to add it into the listing cost of your product. Uh, another very, very useful feature is the pre prevent product price from being set below wholesale cost. This is just a useful safety function. So that way, no matter what happens or whatever pricing rule you set up, your price will never go below your wholesale cost. So you know nothing is gonna happen that is gonna cost you an uh, exuberant amount of money. And then we have a lot of customers all over the world um, selling in different currencies. Uh, the enable currency conversion option is just a way to help uh, convert US dollars to whatever dollar you might be selling on on your store. Now we can also go even further and specify specific markups for different categories. This is useful if you just know there's there's some certain products and certain categories that may require different pricing uh, depending on the pricing strategy that you're using on your website. So let's say we want to do a different markup for camping and outdoors. We would just hit the gear icon next to the camping and outdoors category. We would select the markup type that we'd want to do. Let's say it's a flat percentage markup. And then we would just enter whatever percentage markup we'd like for that category. And then we would hit the update button and that would update the markup for that category. Now every other product is going to be using our basic markup along with any of the advanced pricing add-ins that we may have added, except for the camping and outdoors category. It's gonna bypass that basic markup and, and input whatever markup we have saved here. So these products in the camping outdoors category will get a 28% markup. And then even further, we can do our markups based off of brand. So if you know there's a few brands that you wanna price differently, maybe they're, they're more popular, or you want to highlight a sale on a certain brand, you would click on the Brands tab, and very similar to the, the category-specific markups, you would choose a certain brand in here. So let's say 3M. We'll do a flat percentage markup, and let's say those products we want to mark up 20%. Just like the category markup, this will supersede the basic markup rules and apply a 20% markup to the, the 3M brand products. And if you have any other questions or need any help with configuring your pricing, please feel free to reach out to our support staff or schedule a call with us and we'll be happy to help you out.